Hey guys, what is up? This is Nasty Day, it's me once again. Welcome back to another video game review. This time is going to be on Pikmin 4. I know this game is about a month old and not many people are playing it anymore because uh, there's Baldur's Gate 3, which I haven't played yet because the PS5 version isn't out yet, but it will be. But I feel like I'm going to be in a rush to play so many new games. I mean, Spider-Man 2 is coming out, I think it's either this month or next month. I haven't seen the date. And there's going to be Starfield, which I have Game Pass, so I'll be able to play that. Plus, I'm playing a new JRPG called Sea of Stars. I think that's what it's called. Like, literally, I just started playing it, but then I was all like, you know what? I should review Pikmin 4. And here I am talking about it. Just like the title suggests, it's the fourth installment in the popular Pikmin series. It's a little bit more different, though. I haven't played all the Pikmin games. I've only played a little bit of the third one. And after playing this, I might want to go back and play that game. You don't specifically have to play all of them to play this game, but in case you want to, all the games are available on Nintendo Switch, so there's no excuse not to play them. But in this game, you play as a character that you can customize, and you're on your way to search for Olimar. Olimar was the protagonist of the previous few games, and he has gone missing, and you and the amount of Pikmin you get have to go on a journey, and uh, you have this dog called Awat Awachi, or something like that, and you have to go and search for him. From there, you're going to be exploring various different worlds filled with collectibles and levels. Some are hidden, some are blatantly obvious, but this isn't necessarily a difficult game. If you had trouble playing the past few games, this one I feel like might be a bit more forgiving because in the very first game, you had to beat that game in a specific time. This one, I don't think there's any limit to beating it. I mean, sure, there's the day and night cycle, which shows you how many days have passed by, you might have to complete the entire game if you've, but bottom line is you don't have to complete the game in a specific amount of days that you played it. Like I mentioned before, I haven't played the previous few games. I honestly thought I was going to be bad at the game, which I kind of am, but like I said before, the game isn't punishingly difficult. Pikmin is definitely different than most of Nintendo's other IPs. They went from platformers to some shooters and whatnot. This one is more of a strategic game. When you have your Pikmin, you need to be careful. Like, there are specific types of Pikmin that can help you through specific scenarios and help you get through specific puzzles. There's fire ones, there are water ones, ice ones, electric ones, ones that can fly, and there are so many other different types of new Pikmin to take on. Of course, they have Pikmin that you may have seen in the previous that do make a comeback, though this one, I feel like they use them in so many different ways. I went in with low expectations with this one, and this is the type of game where it's not heavy on story. Like, you can just completely forget that there even is a story and just throw your Pikmin and get the treasures and move on to the next world. There are also some various challenges that you can do in the game, like how long it'll take you to collect specific things and whatnot. But I had a lot more fun with this game than I expected. There are times where I just didn't want to put it down. And I rented the game. And after renting it, I do want to buy the game. Because after beating the main game, there is post-game content. So, needless to say, uh, there's a lot of replayability to the game. And there's a lot more. Just like with, you know, newer Mario games, how after you beat the main story, there's still tons more stuff to do after that. Same with this one. Now, when you throw your Pikmin, you have to be very, very careful, especially when you're fighting off enemies. Because if <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be completely honest. There are times where I found this game kind of disturbing due to the fact that your Pikmin can die if you're not careful. Like if you throw your Pikmin and an enemy eats them or destroys them, yep, they're dead. Now you can rescue other teammates, which can give you side quests. And when you do rescue those teammates, they will give you skill points for Owatachi, Owachi, it might be Owachi, in which you can use those skill points to boost up his abilities. Same with yourself. There are these crystals that you can get and which you can uh, upgrade yourself and giving you more skills and uh, better defense mechanisms in order for you to go up against other enemies because there are various hazards that you will stumble upon. And only Pikmin, specific Pikmin, can handle that certain one. Because if you use specific Pikmin, then yeah, it's either going to die if you don't call them back. But really, what's really unique about this whole thing is the amount of treasures that you can get. This is basically a collect-a-thon game in which you can collect so many different 
objects in which they have their own different collections like uh, food or, you know, pieces of like appliances. It was so much fun to do. There's like six worlds in total. That doesn't feel like a whole lot, but I just had so much fun. I wanted to try 100%ing all the worlds, but of course I wasn't able to do that because I didn't fully finish the game. And in terms of, you know, some, you know, stuff that I didn't like a whole lot, it would just have to be due to the fact that sometimes the Pikmin can be kind of stupid when I'm trying to call them back. And when they're trying to, you know, get the treasures and they're going back to the ship, they immediately run into enemies. It got, there are times where I got really frustrated with the game. Sometimes I feel like it's on me, but there are just other times where I feel like sometimes the Pikmin can have really poor AI. And while there are a lot of people to rescue in which they can give you side missions, honestly, they aren't really all that memorable. There isn't really a character that I would say is, like, absolutely memorable. Like, I'm going to remember this character for a long time. I feel like the only memorable character is Otachi, just due to the fact that he's a, your dog companion. So, yeah, that would kind of make sense. But, really, that's really it. And, while, like I mentioned before, it's more on the easy side, and there isn't, like, any difficulty options. I can necessarily say that this game should just be played if you just want to have fun and... While you might get stressed if you're not careful with your Pikmin because you can, like, get these upgrades that will allow you to carry more Pikmin, but you can't get them until later on. So I really had to be careful with the amount of Pikmin that I got. Because while you can gain more Pikmin, you can't uh, get more of all your Pikmin until, like, much later on. Which, because some obstacles require you to use different amounts of Pikmin that you probably don't have a massive amount of, so you really need to be careful. There are also some underground levels which you can partake in, which I found to be a lot of fun too, which have quite a bit of bosses. And there really isn't any like major end boss to the game, you just have to do a specific challenge. While you will be exploring a lot of the day, you also have to explore at night to get these potions that will allow you to cure some of the people that you find, you know, because some of them have like, I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily say poison, they just have a disease that you have to cure, and you have to, you know, defend the things that have potions in them. You know, to cure them. So yeah, they can be quite a bit of a challenge, but like I said, it's far more easy than it is difficult. And in the end, guys, Pikmin 4 is a game that I had far more fun with than I imaginably thought I would. Like the game has so much to do. There's a lot to collect throughout the game. There's a lot of different challenges to partake in. And while the game isn't heavy on story, that's to be expected because the game is just fun. It's a fun time that allows you to collect a lot of different things and allows you to explore for hours. It has far less challenge than the previous few entries, and I do want to play those other games after playing this one. I had so much fun with it, and while it might not be quite as good as Tears of the Kingdom, I didn't expect that at all. It's just great in terms of flat-out fun, and I do think it's one of the best Switch exclusives, and we're living in a time where the Switch is probably going to be dead soon. But hopefully we will see what happens with Nintendo's new console. But hey, this is definitely a big recommendation for Nintendo Switch owners. I kind of wasn't sure if I wanted to review this one, but I feel like if I do at least beat the story of a game, then I at least want to review it. So yeah, at least newer games, but it's one that I recommend. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later. Word out.